Hey guys, John here, and welcome back to the VPS Avenger 2 Master Course. Today's video is all about the Arpeggiator. So Avenger's Arpeggiator is one of my all-time favorites I've ever seen in any synthesizer out there, and that's because we can have up to eight independent Arpeggiator modules. Each art module has up to 32 steps and four patterns, meaning that for only one art module, we can have 128 steps, and each step has its own velocity control and much, much more. So let's get started. The first thing we need to know is how to turn it on, or more accurately, how to route oscillators to the arpeggiator. So here in the routing section of this oscillator where it says ARP1, let's click this on, and then let's play a chord. And there you go, it's really that simple. So down here in the editor section where it says ARP, let's go ahead and click this here. Now here is the module that we're gonna be concentrating on today. And down here on the bottom left is the actual power button where we can turn it on and off right there. So let's make this patch a little bit easier to listen to. So we have something kind of like this here. And let's slow down the speed a little bit here. Right now we're on the pattern speed of one over 16. Let's go ahead and click this menu here and go to the one over eight. And we can see here we have a lot of different speeds here all the way up to 256, which is pretty crazy. We have dotted notes and triplets, but for now let's stick to one over eight. The arpeggiator also functions as a sequencer if we start editing the notes here in the center. So we can click and drag this up to one octave. We can right click to remove notes. We can right click to bring them back to the spot that they were previously at, or we can left click and it's going to place them wherever our cursor is at the moment. If we left click and drag horizontally on a note, it's going to adjust the gate length of that note only. So something kind of like this here. We can also highlight quite a few different notes. If we go down here where it says zero and right click and drag, and then we can do all these at once. Now these zeros down here is where we go to transpose notes in semitones. So all we have to do is click and drag and it's gonna move these notes up individually, whereas we clicked and dragged these up to move them by octaves. We can also connect notes by holding down the control key and then clicking on the vertical bars for the notes that we'd like to connect. So in this case, let's connect these two right here and let's grab this one and bring it up an octave and let's take a listen to that. And if we want to unconnect those, we can hold control and then re-click it here. Or alternatively, you can click this link icon here, which is going to bring up the same window and it's going to hold it here instead of holding down control. Now, each step has its own velocity slider. All we have to do is left click here in the background and kind of just draw in our shapes how we want to. Now, keep in mind, if we're using velocity, we need to have parameters that react to velocity, such as our filter cutoff. So over here, let's bring this up so it reacts to the velocity changes that we just did. And let's take a listen. If we ever want to move our sequence up and down octaves, all we have to do is click these up and down arrows next to this link icon here, and we can do that like that. Or if we want to transpose it into a different key, we can do that via semitones with these buttons here on the left-hand side, like that. If we're ever working on a sequence and we have different notes around our sequence, something kind of like this, and we want to move everything either to the left or to the right, that can be done via these arrows up here on the top right. So we can go to the right if we click the right button and go back to the left if we click the left button. So let's take a look at some of the basic art features before we start diving into the more complex stuff. So at the bottom left, we can choose how the ARP will play the notes of the chord we're playing, as well as a lock button to prevent the ARP from changing when we change presets. And by default, this mode is set to up, meaning that the notes in our chord will be played in ascending order. So let's take a listen to that. And then we also have down. Then we have alternate. And then we have alternate two. It's actually a really cool one. And then we have the order of the notes that we play. And down here at the bottom, we have a random, which is gonna be a random order. The last two modes are actually quite special, the poly mode and the chords mode. So let's take a look at poly real quick. Now, what this allows us to do is instead of playing individual notes back, it plays our chords back. So take a listen to this here.
Then we have chord mode. Now this mode is really cool because we can input specific chords from the dropdown list and make our own chord progressions right here in Avenger. So let's take a look at that real quick. So we can remove some of these here. Let's go something kind of like that and increase maybe this guy like that. And then maybe add another one kind of like this here. And then another one like that in our last one here. So in this case, we can choose the different chords that we want to play. So we can choose C power fifth, something kind of like that. And then kind of do that for the all these other ones here as well. And let's take a listen to that. And we can also connect the notes as well via this button here and connect this guy and take a listen to that. What's also really cool as well, we can hover our mouse over this here. And what now happens is that we have a choice of C, G, and C that we can mute a certain note in these chords if we want to, or we can have a sub oscillator here and either transpose these in semitones all the way up to plus 24 and negative 12. So when we have poly or chord mode activated, the strum mode becomes activated as well. And this feature allows us to refine our sound a little bit more by simulating actual strumming. So let's see how this works in chord mode. So I initialize the art by right clicking the art by going to initialize. So from here, what we can do is go on the mode and then let's choose chords. And then for our pattern length, let's go all the way down to something about four. And for these different chords, let's select the power fifth once again for all four of these, because we're going to be strumming on one chord. Now, the strum mode is now going to be activated, right? And we have this dial. So what we need to actually do is click this here so we go into strum edit. Now, what we can do is we can click and drag, and this is going to go up or down, simulating. Is the strumming going to be going upwards or is it going to be going downwards? So if I was going to be playing this on a guitar, for example, I'd probably do downwards first. So we can go down like this, up for the next one, down like this for the next one, and up like this for the next one at the full strength. And then let's take a listen to that. Pretty crazy, but let's slow this down to take a closer listen to this. So here we can almost hear the individual notes being strung. So with that being the case, we can maybe bring this up to a little bit like one over eight and kind of slowly fade this into where it sounds right. And we can also increase the speed to one over 16 again. To the right of the mode area, we have our octave section. Now, by default, this is going to be playing in one octave, and we can go all the way up to four. So let's take a listen to those real quick. And here we're back to one octave. Underneath the octave section, we have something called fixed note. Now, by default, this is going to be off, meaning that whatever notes that we play on our keyboard is going to be the notes that we hear. There's a couple different options we can choose from. So these first three ones here, these Cs, let's select C2, for example, and play some notes. We immediately notice that whatever note that we play on our keyboard is going to be the exact same note, in this case, a C2. Now we can override that by entering something here in this window as a sequence. Now this can be useful if we have a sequence programmed and we just want to press a button to trigger it and not necessarily have to worry about which note that we play. The next option that we have is called chord detection. Now, this is a really cool feature to use with a bass arp. So what happens is that Avenger will detect the chord that we're playing and make sure that the bass note is correct. So from an init preset, this is something I would use this for. Let's give us some unison here. Bring this down and change out our filter to the low pass vintage 12. Give us some good amount of envelope and some resonance. And send it to our arp. So we have something kind of like that. And from here, let's go from fixed note to chord detection. And let's go to this preset menu, go to baselines, and then let's select this basic baseline one and make sure all of these are going to be on the same octave. And increase the amp release a little bit. So we basically have a bass art. So the cool part is let's say we take this out of our effects and then let's add another oscillator by hitting this plus here. And for the second oscillator, let's remove it from the filter because it's going to do its own thing. Give it full unison, maybe six or seven voices of unison and bring this up by two octaves and bring the level down just a little bit. Okay, so we have something like this going. And what we can do to make this a little bit cooler is let's right click our effects chain, let's add a chorus and let's also add a trance gate, which is kind of cool and bring the mix down a little bit. So we have something kind of like that. And in our step sequencer, which we're going to go over a little bit later on the course, is kind of edit our transcate here. A 
Okay, so we basically have something kind of cool here. We can even add a little bit of reverb if we want to, but I want you to listen to the bass note as I start changing chords. The bass note is always gonna be correct, and it's even cooler once we play it a little bit lower. The last entry on the list is called Chord Detection with Minor Major Scale. So let's go ahead and select this guy and let's make a sequence in a minor key. So let's bring our pattern length down to about eight and let's go zero, zero, three, right? Cause we want to be in minor and then zero, 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 two, zero. And let's bring our pattern speed down to one over eight and let's play a C. So this is going to play the sequence because it is minor. Now what happens if we play a C major? Avenger will detect that and it will automatically transpose the sequence into a major scale, which is really cool. So once again, here's just a C and then here's a C major. Notice how this note right here, this D sharp. So if we're doing it in a minor, it'll go hitting this D sharp. But if we play a major chord, it's going to go to this right here. Take a listen again. To the right of the strum knob, we have a knob called humanize. Now, this parameter will randomly shift the starting position of each note, giving it more of a human touch and less of a highly quantized sound. So let's take a listen to that real quick. A little bit of this knob goes quite a long way. Next up, we have shuffle. Now, this knob will change the rhythmic feel of the ARP. So let's take a listen to that real quick. Now, obviously, higher values will make it a little bit more extreme, but keep in mind, this is a global shuffle control, meaning that it controls other shuffle parameters. The gate knob determines the gate length of all the notes, so let's take a listen to that real quick as well. And next to the gate length, we have our pattern length. Currently, it's set to 8 right now. We can go all the way down to 2 at the very minimum or all the way up to 32 at the very maximum. So down here, we have a really cool velocity section. Now, as we saw before, we can click and drag and set the velocity like this here. So let's do something kind of rhythmical. Let's keep this first one higher up. And these ones a little bit lower, something like that. And bring this one up, some of these a little bit lower, this one up, and then some of these a little bit lower as well. And then same deal for this guy and something like that. So now we're using velocity and we need to target a parameter that reads velocity, right? So something like our filter cutoff. So let's bring this knob or the slider all the way up to the top and let's play a note. Now, something to keep in mind is that once we play a note, the initial velocity is going to have influence of what we're playing here. So if we played something kind of softer, we can tell that the sequence is working and the velocity is working. But if we played a little bit harder, it's going to scale it up a little bit more. Now, here's where these menus come in handy, right? So by default, this is going to be on first note. Now, the first note that is pressed, so the first note that you play, is going to set the velocity for the entire thing, regardless of other notes that you add. So if we did something kind of low like this, I played some other notes, that velocity is going to be set regardless of how hard we hit the other notes. Moving on from here, we have last note. Now, last note, the new notes that are played in your ARP are going to determine the velocity. So again, if I have something soft, now I hit a really hard note higher up. Now it's going to bring the whole thing up to compensate for the velocity that I did for the second note. Now the next one is going to be each note, which is probably pretty self-explanatory. Every note played gets its own velocity value. So something kind of low here and then something hard. There we hear the low thumping and also the higher up velocity. So let's listen to that again. And lastly, we have the lowest note here. So the lowest active note will set the velocity. So for example, if I did something really hard here, and then I'm going to add a very soft note on the lower end. So the lower note takes the priority of that velocity. So definitely a lot of cool menus to go through. I highly recommend to experiment with those. And we also have a amount slider down over here at the bottom. 
And to the right of the velocity section, we have our start and end note. So basically where we want our ARP to start and where we want it to end at. So if we click this here, we can select a range from our keyword where we want the ARP to start. And we can go here to end note where we want the ARP to end. It's basically a way to confine our ARP to a certain area of the keyboard. As I mentioned earlier in the video, we have four patterns in each ARP, A, B, C, and D. Now, A will be on by default as it's the first one used. But if we want to add B, we simply have to right click on B, and now this is going to be active, and we can left click to change to this window and start editing it. So for B, let's bring everything up one octave, and then for A, we're going to leave it right over here, and let's take a listen. Now we notice this is only going to repeat A. What we need to do is click this play button right here so it goes from A to B. And it's going to go back to A. If we want to add C and D, the same process applies. Now, we also have this button here called Auto Follow, and this is going to be on by default. So basically what this does, if it's on, we're always going to see what pattern is going to be playing. So if we turn this off and then play our sequence, we're on B, but we don't see B. If we turn this back on, now we can see B as it plays automatically, so the Auto Follow. Now, what's really cool as well, you might be wondering why is there a play button in the first place anyway if we can use multiple patterns? And that's because we can switch through these via modulation. So a quick example of this, if we grabbed a macro and dropped it on the bar here, these A, B, and C, and D, and then we gave it pretty much a full amount for right now, we can have a pattern here, and then as we move this macro, it can switch to B. Now, this can be controlled with different types of automation, so LFO, stuff like that. So it's a really, really cool feature, and that's why this whole button exists. To the right of the A, B, C, D patterns, we see this button here with three dots. Now, if we click this, we have a lot of different options to go through. So for example, let's say we have a pattern length of eight, and we did something like this, bring this up an octave and bring this one down an octave. If we wanna copy the first half to the second half, we can do that via this menu, right? We click this here, and let's say copy the first half, and then we click this again, and we can say, paste this to the first half or paste this to the second half. And in this case, we'll paste it to the second half. Now this is super useful if we have 32 steps and we don't want to manually copy things. So that's a very cool thing as well. We can also clear this here. We can also do different presets here. So for example, baselines, we can go to Electro Baseline 5 and we have something quick like this. So yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff to explore. I highly recommend you go through this list as it's a lot of fun. A really cool feature in Adventure is the ratchet feature. Now, this lets us divide notes per step, and we can then adjust the volume and the pitch of those note divisions. So let's take a look how that works, but let's first remember to make sure that our amp velocity is all the way up here. Let's bring our ARP speed down to 1 over 4 so we can really see what's going on. And then on step 2, this little down arrow, let's go ahead and click this, and then where it says ratchet 2, let's open up this menu and select 2 even and take a listen to that. So here we can see that on step two, the note was divided in two steps. Now what's really cool as well, we can click this so we can go all the way up to eight ratchets and all these different menus have many different types of ratchets, right? So if we look at this two in, we can see that this bar is a little bit lower than the next one. So let's take a listen how that sounds. Now this is also affecting the filter cutoff right here because this is on velocity and also affecting the amplitude, which is really cool. Furthermore, we can right click this and we can adjust these individual bars ourselves to whatever we like, as well as note offsets. So for example, let's bring this one up one octave and then the second one, we can bring this up seven semitones or a fifth. So we basically have an ARP within an ARP, which is a really cool concept. Now let's take a look at the ratchet decay. So for this example, if we right click here, these are both gonna be 100% and there's gonna be zero offset. Now, if we click this, menu here again. Right now it's going to be on Decay Bend Up. Let's take a listen to that. And then we can click to Decay Linear. It's a little bit more snappy. And then we have Decay Bend Down. And then finally we have Decay Off, which is going to be this default here. This one sounds a little bit smoother, but I personally like the Decay Linear as my personal favorite. But you can change this to other versions depending on the patch that you're making. 
Let's take a quick look at this different mode here called Ratchet Note Play. So by default, this is going to be on Stay on ARP Note, and the other one is going to be called Follow MIDI Note. So the first option will play the note programmed in the arpeggiator for as many ratchets as there are, and the second note will play the notes of the chord that we're playing through each ratchet note. So the best way to demonstrate this is let's slow down our pattern speed to 1 over 2, and for our ratchets, let's click this here, and let's go to Ratchet 4, and let's do something like 4 even, and let's play a chord. So did you notice that on this second step here with the four ratchets, it's repeating the same note, even though I'm playing a chord. Now, if we change to this different option, follow MIDI notes, this is going to play the notes in the chord throughout those different ratchets. So now let's get to one of the coolest features inside Avengers ARP, the randomizer. So we can access the randomizer by clicking on the dice button on the top of our center section right over here. Now what's really cool about Avengers randomizer is that we can randomize notes, silence, note length, octaves, velocity, ratchet, and note connecting. The first thing that we see here are all the notes highlighted and in use based on the keyboard right over here. And then we see in the center screen all these different notes represented in percentages. Now these bars represent the probability of notes being used when we roll the dice to randomize it. So let's choose a minor scale to work with by clicking on the three lines in the keyboard section over here on the left hand side. And let's go here to minor. So here we can say that all the notes that make up the minor scale have 14% probability of being chosen. So let's say for example, we want to completely remove the possibility of the seventh note in the scale of being chosen. We do this by bringing the slider all the way down to zero. And we see how this updates live and that note will no longer appear in our ARP. So now let's take a look at the silence. So we can click here next to note where it says silence. And here we have a possibility of no, one, two, three, and four. So for this, let's bring up our strength knob all the way to the top. Now, basically this is saying how many blocks of silence do we want to have randomized? So here's four, let's bring this down to zero, three to zero, two to zero, and we have no, and then one. So whatever happens, we basically have no silences, which is, are gonna be these two, or a possibility, or technically 41% of one block of silence here. Now, if we increase this to here as well, we can start seeing that we're gonna get two blocks of silence. Now, we also have this button here called not twice. Now, basically, if we uncheck this here, and then we bring this first one all the way to the top, something like this, and do some randomizing with this roll button here, there's a possibility, like even here, that we can have these consecutive one block of silence here. Definitely very interesting. So now let's take a look at length here. So we have a lot of different sliders here. Now let's bring all these down except for the first one. So the first one has a 100% chance and let's bring our strength knob all the way up. So what this is basically telling us is the gate length of all these different notes. So if it's 100% chance on one, so that's gonna be one block, right? If we start increasing maybe 0.5, for example, we can see that some of these notes will now have 50% lifetime. So let's take a listen to that. Or we can remove one entirely and give all of these half time start mixing in whatever we'd like. So next up we have octave, which is pretty self-explanatory, but let's bring up our strength all the way to the top and we have options of zero. So no octave change or down one octave or down two octaves or plus one or plus two. So if you wanna keep things maybe in a negative one to plus one octave range, we'd bring these down to zero and only leave these two and mix these to how we want to. And then we also have options on the right for only up and for only down. Next up here, we have velocity. Now this one isn't determined via sliders. This one is determined via this curve right over here. So as we move this curve, we can see that these sliders on the top here, the velocity sliders will start to change as well. So next on the list, we have ratchet. Now this one again is pretty self-explanatory. We have our strength parameter and we have a value of none. So no ratchets, two ratchets, three ratchets, or four ratchets. And again, we have this button here called not twice, which is on by default. And it's very similar to the one on silence, right? So if we don't want two consecutive notes having this parameter applied, then we would keep this on. However, if we want everything to be pretty much more random, then we can turn this off right over here. And finally, we have our connect here. So basically this one's pretty simple. We have two values, no and yes. Do we want our notes to be connected or do we not want them to be connected? We also have our strength parameter. And again, we have this not twice button if we don't want consecutive notes to be connected. On the left-hand side, we have all the different parameters we can enable for randomizing or rolling the dice. If we have a sequence we like, but only want to adjust the octaves and lengths, for example, we just have to make sure that only those two are enabled and then we click roll. 
This little keyboard here on the left hand side is also interactive, meaning that we can select a certain scale and we can add or remove notes from it as we like. And we also have these four different patterns here that we can switch through via modulation. Inside Avenger, there are lots of different presets with predefined randomness values that target a certain style. So what we could do from an init preset is something kind of like this. So we start off with a saw wave, let's send it to our ARP, and maybe let's switch out our filter to maybe again the vintage low pass 12. This is really nice. Something kind of like that. Now we're here inside our ARP. Now what we can do as well is go back to our randomness area. And then down here at the bottom where it says default, we can click this and then let's go to maybe TB Acid Lines 1, something kind of like that. And now we basically have an acid baseline. So we can always build upon this by adding a little bit of unison. Maybe a little bit more resonance. Sub saw or sub, sub square. And once we have something like this pretty cool, we can always adjust it a little bit more. Maybe we want to connect these notes. Maybe we want to connect these notes as well. And maybe we can go to our pitch section and maybe go to a mono legato for a little bit more authenticity. Or what we can do as well is we go back to our dice area and we can start adjusting these randomness parameters. So for example, we did something like that with the connect and we can bring the strength up pretty significantly high, something like that, and maybe give a little bit more, maybe something kind of like that and then give it some rolls like that and let's see what we come up with. Now this is just the asset category. We have quite a few different ones to choose from. So what we could do as well, maybe let's check out the trance baseline one. Yeah, so hopefully you can see how amazing this ARP is inside Avenger. Before we let you go, there are a few additional options that we need to go over, and these are located on the bottom right of the randomize window. The first one is going to be auto update. Now this has been on the entire time. It's basically auto updating these parameters as we're adjusting these sliders. The next one is going to be symmetry, which basically symmetrizes the other side. So let's take a look at that real quick. Let's do some randomness on a minor scale here, and let's symmetrize it here. And if we turn this off, and let's turn it back on to symmetrize. And then the last one is going to be auto dice, which is basically going to reroll every time the sequence completes. So let's take a look at that real quick. Now this auto dice is actually pretty cool. So if you have a very specific randomness range that you want to stick to, but you kind of want things still to be a little bit random in some sense, then that's where auto dice really comes in handy. All right, guys. So this concludes the video on Avengers Arpeggiator. As you can see, it's very powerful. And hopefully now you can see why it's one of my favorites I've ever used in any synth. So hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video.